Before we discuss perhaps the most important gate in quantum computing, we will quickly revisit the block sphere. In earlier lessons, we saw that on the equator we have four states, the plus state, minus state, I state, and negative I state. Now that we know about phase, we can define these states. All they are a shorthand for commonly used states. Since they all lie on the equator of the block sphere, they all have an even chance of being measured as 0 or 1, but each one contains a different relative phase. The plus state is the state 1 on root 2 0 plus 1 on root 2 1. The next state is the minus state. This is the same as the plus state, but with a relative phase of negative 1. The I state has a relative phase of I, and the negative I state has a relative phase of negative I. Now let's look at the Hadamard gate. Here is the matrix for the gate. If we look at how the gate acts on a qubit on the block sphere, we see that the zero state gets transformed into the plus state, and the one state gets transformed into the minus state. Applying a Hadamard to the plus state gives us the zero state, and applying a Hadamard to the minus state gives us a one state. This means that the Hadamard is its own inverse. If we wanted to apply a Hadamard gate to an arbitrary qubit state in Dirac notation, we can replace the zero with the plus state, and the one with the minus state, and expand. The Hadamard gate shows that phase matters. If we apply the gate to the plus state, we get 0, and to the minus state, we get 1. These states only differ by a relative phase, but after applying the gate, they are different, even though initially they both had a 0.5 chance of being measured as 0, and a 0.5 chance of being measured as 1. In the fourth section of this course, we will start to look at some quantum computing algorithms and you will start to see why the Hadamard gate and phase is so powerful.